And joining us now, Deborah Sass and Thomas Reamer, co-founders of Space Hero. I'm hooked already just from the teaser. Uh, Deborah, what will the show look like? How do you pick contestants and how does someone actually win? So, so many questions all at once. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I, I have to say it's the first time I've seen the sizzle reel actually on the screen like that. So that was pretty cool. It was a little emotional, huh? So very nice. How will the contestants be picked? It'll be a global outreach to many different people all around the world using an app that we are developing right now. And actually there is no barrier to entry. We are actually going to be able to really let people from any walk of life become part of this program, which I think is pretty exciting news. It's about democratizing space travel. So Thomas, what does the timeline look like for the show? When do you expect to start filming and when would liftoff be? <laughs> yeah, brilliant question, Jill. Thank you very much. Liftoff is planned to be in the first quarter of 2023. So literally two years from now, which sounds a long time, but it's actually not a long time at all because it will be preceded uh, by the training, uh, by the competition season, right? And also by the application phase, which we have extended to six months so that uh, everybody on this planet that really wants to go to the International Space Station has a chance to come forward and apply. Uh, Deborah, a lot of companies right now, a lot of private companies are working on space tourism. You've got SpaceX, Blue Origin, uh, Virgin Galactic. Which space company are you working with? Well, what we're allowed to say in public is that we have a brilliant broker called Axiom Space. They've been in the news quite a bit. I think you'll uh, be able to follow some of that stuff. And they will be securing our ticket with a launcher. Now, there are two launchers available in the world to take somebody to the ISS, one being Roscosmos and one being SpaceX. Uh, Thomas, what do you look for in a winner. So I, I will tell you, I'm watching right now for all mankind on Apple TV. I don't know if you guys have seen it. So I'm like, I'm super into this segment right now because I'm all primed up on space travel. What do you look like, what, excuse me, what are you looking for in these future astronauts or at least these future space tourists? See, a lot of people uh, bury their hope, right? When they wanted to fly to space when they were in first grade because they understand that it becomes harder and harder and harder, right? The um, conditions that, you know, uh, all the space agencies put up there are quite hard to reach, you know, double PhD, 10,000 hours of flight experience. This is not the people we are looking for, right? What we find interesting is, you know, that this aspiration of go to space, of going to space, you know, affects everybody's everyday life, right? And if you want to go on that journey with us, you absolutely should do so. The second portion of the word space hero is very much important to us as well. A hero for us is somebody that, you know, is giving something to others uh, voluntarily without asking anything in return. A lot of people are doing that without knowing it, right? They are taking care of families, of their, you know, relatives, of their neighborhoods, you know, servicing other people as firemen, as doctors. And that's exactly the people that we want to encourage to take part in this competition because if you're a hero down on Earth, you will be a hero in space for sure. Aw, uh, what do you hope, uh, Deborah, that viewers take away from the show? You know, every time we tag somebody on Facebook, we're actually using satellites in the sky. And so few people know the technology and the advances that space has actually provided to us here on Earth. I would love, and Thomas and I talk about this a lot, to inspire the next generation of people who are not just space heroes, but that actually want to be part of science and technology and innovation and sustainability that we have made with a mass media program like Space Hero. We've made space more accessible. We've made it mainstream. We've made it sexy and cool. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's just it's just crazy. I, I'm curious what you guys think, and we don't have that much time left, but what you think the next space race is going to be? Is it Mars? It, wh where do we go when it comes to space travel? Thomas, I'll start with you. So I think that um, a lot of people always think that, you know, it needs to be science driven, it needs to be exploration driven, right? But I don't think that's uh, all. Um, a lot of the chances that we have in exploring other worlds and uh, space in particular is that we can offload uh, things that we don't want to do on this planet here, because ultimately this is our home planet. Uh, we want to live here for a long time. We want to live under great circumstances in a near paradise, right? And if we have to offload things that are destroying our planet uh, for our sake, right, then we should do that. Manufacturing comes to mind, a lot of other things, right, uh, the, the sourcing of energy, et cetera. And I think that's where the next space race is going to be. You know, who can make it feasible to do manufacturing in space? Who can, you know, get solar energy down to Earth through space in a feasible way? That's the race that I see. And Deborah? Well, I'm going to take the the, the non-approach in regards to, I just want to see people get more involved with science and technology, engineering, maths, arts, entrepreneurialism, money. And I think this show will help to, you know, to really inspire people that don't necessarily come from education, that don't necessarily come from money, that don't have the same opportunities that perhaps us in the Western world got. That's what I would love this legacy to be. All right, uh, I can't wait for it. Deborah Sass and Thomas Reamer, co-founders of Space Hero. So great to have you guys on.